Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. I hope you enjoyed the personal success interview and the legacy episode over the last two weeks. Please go back and listen to episodes 28 and 29 if you haven't already done so. There are some great takeaways in both episodes. Today, I want to talk about self-control, that ability we all have, but we don't always use. I am sure we can all think of a time in which we paid a high price for a lack of self-control in a situation or a given area of our lives. So what is self-control and why is it important? Self-control is defined as the ability to control oneself, in particular one's emotions and desires or the expression of them in one's behavior, especially in difficult situations. Some synonyms for self-control are abstinence, avoidance, self-denial, self-restraint, non-indulgence. Self-control has to do with willpower, self-regulation, and controlling impulsivity. It is essentially managing your impulses, your emotions, and your behavior so that you can reach a goal or effectively deal with a situation. Self-control is important because it, it is what separates humans from animals. I, I read in psychology today that self-control uses the pre- frontal cortex part of our brain, which helps us to plan, to problem solve, and make decisions. That part of our brain is much larger in humans than it is in other mammals. There's a quote, if you can control your mind, you can control your life. Self-control is also important because it helps to maintain boundaries and respect in relationships, and it prevents dangerous situations from happening or escalating. Research has shown that people with strong self-control have better health, relationships, finances, and careers. They are also less likely to have problems with overeating, overspending, smoking, alcohol or drug abuse, procrastination, and unethical behavior. There are four main types of self-control. They are, number one, concentration or attentional control. This is choosing what you will pay attention to and what you will ignore. This is huge because what you focus on and what you think about will eventually become your reality. The Bible says as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The Bible also tells us to think on things that are true, that are honest, that are just, that are pure, that are lovely, that are virtuous, and that are of a good report. So when it comes to concentration, not controlling or redirecting your thoughts could potentially be harmful to you or to someone else. For instance, if someone does something that offends or upsets you and you just keep talking about it or rehearsing what they did or said in your mind, your anger and your agitation will intensify and could cause you to do something that you wouldn't normally do if you were in a calmer state of mind. Likewise, if you're trying to lose weight and keep thinking about your favorite fattening dessert, you know, you will likely end up eating the very thing you should be staying away from. It is essentially mind over matter. The second type of self-control is impulse control. That is being able to stop and think before acting. You think about the potential consequence ahead of time. What will happen if I do this? How might he or she react to my saying that? That type of thing. You don't just blurt stuff out of your mouth without some forethought or consideration of the impact because you could cause some serious and lasting damage. The third type of self-control is emotional control. And that is the ability to keep your emotions in check, especially in stressful or antagonistic situations. You know, think of a toddler temper tantrum. When they feel anger or sadness or disappointment, they just let it out, scream, cry, kick, or hit with no awareness or concern for how their outbursts affect themselves or those around them. 
Emotions are not good leaders because they fluctuate and they're sometimes not based in reality or facts. They can cause you to behave in nonsensical or irrational ways. Uh, having and feeling emotions is natural, but we have to be careful with our expression of them, especially when there's potential to do harm to yourself or to someone else. There's a quote, don't be a slave to your emotions, control them. The fourth type of self-control is movement control. This is where you control your body, how and when it moves. You know, children and some adults have to learn about, you know, personal space, when to sit, how to sit in certain uh, settings. All of that has to do with controlling your body and not using it in inappropriate ways or ways that make other people uncomfortable. You have to control your body, what you put in it if you're trying to, you know, live a healthy life, how you use it, especially in hostile situations. You may you know, have an urge to punch someone out during a heated exchange, but nine times out of 10, that is not the best or right response to the situation. So self-control can range from, you know, resisting a donut when you're supposed to be reducing your sugar intake to being quiet and sitting still at a live theater performance. People who have self-control do not allow their desires, their impulses or emotions to control them or to control their life. They instead employ disciplines, habits, methodologies, and techniques to exert control over their wants, emotions, impulses, and their bodies. Some examples of this are, you know, removing temptations or removing yourself from your temptations, measuring your progress to stay on track, and rewarding yourself as you reach certain milestones, counting to 10 before responding when angry or waiting until you're calmer to respond. You know, I think there, there are some what I call danger zones when it comes to self-control. You really really have to be aware and careful when angry or when triggered or, or, or tempted by something. I believe you have to know what triggers you, what tempts you, and what angers you. And, and have an idea and a plan for how you're going to handle those people and those situations in advance of something happening. Because it is not the triggers, temptations, or anger that are the problem. It is how you handle them. Remember, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to what happens. Even the Bible does not speak against anger. It acknowledges that you will get angry, but gives you a plan for what to do with that anger. Don't go to bed angry, it says. Don't let anger cause you to sin. And don't associate with people prone to anger because they will get you in trouble. There's a quote, you don't have to attend every argument you are invited to. I love that quote. Be intentional about reaching your goals, knowing that you will likely need some form of self-control, you know, during your journey. I always say there's there's failure of intent and then there's actively intending not to not to do something. Uh, they are very different in my opinion. Failure of intent as as I see it is doing or saying something and then, you know, reflecting on the result or fallout afterwards. Active intention is counting up the costs and thinking about potential outcomes before you move to ensure or get as close as possible to the outcome you want. It's, it's first deciding what outcome you want and then doing everything in your power to influence or create that outcome. Self-control is living a life of active intention. This is what I want, so this is what I'm going to do to reach that goal. This is what I don't want to happen, so this is what I'm going to do or not do to make sure that doesn't happen. Failure of intention is finding out what you do and don't want after the fact. I hope that makes sense. If we live our lives that way, self-control can be an effective tool that we all can use to reach our goals in life. Any big goal is usually going to require a plan, some work, and sacrifice to reach it. Self-control is a vehicle that can help us reach our desired destinations. I think it is so interesting that the antonym for or the opposite of self-control is self-indulgence. When you lack self-control, you just do whatever you feel like doing or saying without awareness or concern for the consequence or the people or the situations around you. It, it is essentially acting like you are the only person on the planet. Self-control is also considered a fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit are characteristics of Jesus Christ that are displayed in the life of the believer through the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a proverb scripture that says, he who is slow to anger is better and more honorable than the mighty. And he who rules and controls his own spirit is better than he who captures a city. 
There's another scripture that says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and self-control. Researchers who study self-control often describe it as being like a muscle that gets fatigued with heavy use. However, the same muscles that become exhausted by exercise in the short term are strengthened by regular exercise in the long term. Self-control may not feel good when you first start doing it, but it will benefit you and your life in the long term. Sacrifice now, benefit later. Self-control now, the life and outcome you want later. If you're not happy with the way your life is going or if you are not reaching your goals, take a look at your self-control or your lack thereof. Changing your life will always start with changing your thinking and changing what you do or how you do something. There's a quote, you must learn a new way to think before you can master a new way to be. I'm thinking of the lyrics to the Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror, and they are, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. Self-control might just be the change you need to make the world and your world a better place. Bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates, released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.